Since doing my last tutorial on the diamond gradient, I've received a lot of emails and comments and inquiries about gradients. So today I'm gonna to answer your top three questions about gradients. Hey, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, where we learn to master Photoshop to make better photographs. This is Photoshop for photographers. So today I'm gonna to answer your top three questions about gradients. The first question, first and foremost, the most popular question that comes in is, Blake, my gradients look nothing like yours. How do I get them fixed? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pop on a gradient here to show you what the gradient panel looks like, okay? If you're in the gradient panel from the gradient editor like this, like after you get into the gradient fill and then you get into the gradient editor, this gradient editor that you see right here is actually the exact same thing as if you go to window and then go to gradients like I have here. I've put mine up here next to my histogram. These are the same thing. You can basically manage your gradients the same way that you would from the gradient editor. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into the gradient editor because it's a little bit easier to talk about this. So I'm gonna pop into the gradient editor here. Now in the gradient editor, things have changed in here. It doesn't look like it, but in the first release of Photoshop CC 2020, they gave us some phenomenal capabilities with gradients. First and foremost was organizing gradients. So you'll see my gradients. I like mine to look like the old gradient editor and the old gradient editor didn't have folders. The new gradient editor has all these folders. Yours probably looks like this, whereas mine has all these gradients up top. How did I do that? Well, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to manage the gradients while you're here too. I'm gonna click on this gradient here, press and hold shift, and then click on the top gradient. Then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say delete gradients. <gasps> yeah, I already saved them, don't worry. Okay, I've got this folder called my gradients and they're all in there, so I'm not too worried about that. But what you'll see from your Photoshop CC, if you've never done anything in the gradient editor, is a bunch of folders here. Now, at first, this is annoying. You're like, why do I have to open up these folders in order to get this stuff out of here? However, if you wanna build your own gradient palette really quickly with the stuff that Adobe has already put in here for you, all you have to do is go into each folder, click on one gradient, press and hold shift and click on the last gradient, and then just move it up until you see a blue line above all the other folders. So now this folder is done. I'll go into blues, I'll click on this one, press and hold shift, click on the last one, move it up. Then I'll go out down to purples, click on this one, press and hold shift, and then move that up. So you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm just going through each individual folder and then grabbing all the gradients out of there so that they aren't in individual folders. Now, the, the idea behind individual folders is great if you're organizing them by say sunset or portrait or landscape or foliage or whatever that might be. I think that's a good way to organize your gradients. But when it comes to not knowing what gradient you want to use and experimenting with gradients, it can be awfully tricky to go through every one of these folders and have to do that. So all I'm doing here is going through every folder individually and grabbing them and moving them out above there. And what you'll see is that I'm essentially creating my own gradient palette here from all the stuff that Adobe has already. Now these aren't, this isn't how I created my gradients, but now you'll see that this is a lot easier and a lot more friendly for you to go around and click through here based on the color that you wanna select. I like how they have it broken down into folders, but it's kind of a pain when it comes to trying to find a gradient when you're stuck in a rut or something like that. So now the cool thing about this, now that you've got them all set up like this, you can grab the bottom one, press and hold shift, click the top one, and then right click and say export selected gradients, okay? So when I export those selected gradients, I'm gonna export them as Blake's from Adobe, okay? That way I know that they're all Adobe's gradients, now, if I right click this and delete these gradients, all right, all of these gradients in here in this basic folder all the way down to these pastels, they're pretty much gone because I took them all out of their folders. There's a couple ways to get those back. I'm just gonna go ahead and shift click on the folders, right click and then delete these groups, okay? So if I wanna get these back, all I gotta do is press import and then what I'm gonna import. I'm gonna import Blake's gradients from Adobe and now I've got all of them here. It's gonna open up as a folder because again, it's trying to make sure you're organized. So if I click on the top one, press and hold shift and click on the bottom one, I can then move these out of here and put them on top of those gradients. So to answer that question, why don't my gradients look like yours? The reason is I took my gradients out of the folders and put them on the top so that I have a better visual display when I'm trying to select a gradient that I wanna use on my photo. The second question I get asked a lot is, Blake, you have a lot of your own gradients. How did you do that? Okay, well, how I make my own gradients is pretty simple. So what I do is I go into the gradient editor and whatever gradient is there, I just click on it. Uh, I can click any two color gradient at this point. A lot of times the way I build my gradients is based off of a specific image. So I can't see my image underneath here. So I'm just gonna press okay, press okay. I'm gonna change this to something like soft light 
and then drop this opacity down quite a bit. Now, if I wanted to build a gradient from this image, what I would do is I would select different colors from within the photo. That's how I build up my entire inventory of gradients. So I'll double click on this. I'll click on the gradient itself. And then with the color picker, I can double click on this color. And this is gonna be the darkest dark area. So I'm gonna pick a darkish red color here from this IR photograph that I have of Yosemite. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna double click on this color here. And let's say I want those colors to be like that. So this is basically going to be a gradient that will emulate that IR chrome or error chrome look that you would see in an error chrome or IR chrome photo. I'm gonna double click on this color, maybe make it a little bit more on that reddish. So I've got this gradient set up. Now, before I get out of here, what I wanna do is I wanna press new. Now here I can name it. I can actually call this um, error chrome, okay? And then I'll press new. Now you'll see that this gradient now pops down at the bottom of all my folders, and that's always gonna be there for me. Now, if I wanna move that up with the rest of my gradients, I'll just grab it and move it up. So sometimes I want a gradient that's very similar to this, but I wanna change the color slightly. So I'm gonna copy that where it says Air Chrome, and then I'm gonna double click here, and I'm gonna make that a little bit more saturated here in the orange, and then double click this one and make this one a little bit more saturated in the blue, and then I'll paste that Air Chrome in here and call this Air Chrome 2. I could have just typed that out, but I just copied and pasted it, and then I'll press New. So now I've got two gradients that are very similar to one another, but one's just a little bit more saturated than the other. And that gives me two gradients, all right? Now you could create your own gradient folder here for this and put these in there, or you can just mix them and match them right up with the rest of your gradients that you have here so that they're clickable as you're trying to select the gradient that you wanna use in your image. So that's how I make my own gradients. But just know that as you add new gradients, you're also gonna to wanna to do that same thing that I did before by clicking on the bottom one pressing and holding shift and clicking on the top one and then exporting them out as a new set of gradients. Okay, so with this one, I would export this out and say, uh, Blake's from Adobe, let's say, and you see how I have it labeled here, 2020, okay? Something like that, or, or number two, or with two editions, whatever that might be. Just some way that I know that it's not just those gradients from Adobe, but it's also those gradients from Adobe with some other things that I've done within there. Now I can call that up at any time I want. I can also share it with my friends, just like I shared my sunset gradients with you in that diamond gradient tutorial. The third question I got was really pertaining to that diamond gradient video, which I'll link at the end of this video and also put in the description below so you can see that. But the third question I got was, I see that as you change your gradient here, it's changing with a diamond. How is it doing that? Well, this is one thing I actually failed to mention in that video, this little menu icon that you see here. This shows you the defaults of what you will see in your gradients. So here you can manage the size of your gradients that you're gonna see here. Some people only had a list and they were like, wait, why can't I see mine like yours? Well, it's because it's set to a list. So I like to have this set as a small thumbnail group. I like it to show my recent ones at the top because those are the ones that I use most often typically. And then right here, you see where it's got a checkbox here? This is what will default to the type of gradient that you're gonna be using as you click through these gradients. So even if we were in this gradient down here, if we set this gradient, let's say we just set this gradient right here to a diamond gradient, like I showed you in my video tutorial. Okay, and I'm gonna increase this, the soft light here a little bit more. So let's say I have this as a diamond gradient and I'll put that right here, like right in the middle, press okay. And then I click on another gradient here. It's gonna change it actually to a linear gradient. Why is it doing that? It's probably driving you nuts. Well, it's doing that because here, your default for this gradient viewer here is probably set to linear. So you have to change this on a case by case basis. But if you want it to be set to the diamond gradient, you just check that box. And now as we click through these, it will default them to a diamond gradient instead of a linear gradient. If you're working with a gradient here, like we change this to a linear gradient, we're like, oh, okay, I like the way the linear gradient looks. And then you click this, guess what? It's gonna default it back to a diamond gradient. So depending on the gradient that you're trying to use, you wanna set this default here to a gradient that you know you use most often, so that as you click through here, you know that those are gonna be linear or radial or whatever that might be, whatever is most often for you. I know I said three questions. Fourth question is kind of a little bonus one. Some people were asking me, how are you moving the gradient? This is the thing drives people nuts. You double click on the gradient here, right within the little thumbnail. You Double click on that thumbnail, and only here can you move the gradient around, okay? That's the only place that you can move this gradient around as of right now in Photoshop. Once you put that where you want it to be and press okay, it's locked in place. If you try to move this right now, it, it might pop up with a box that says you need to rasterize this in order to move it. If you rasterize it, it's no longer a gradient, it's now pixel layers and not an adjustment layer. So 
that's how you move it. Just in case you missed that diamond gradient tutorial, I've got it here. Go ahead and click on this and you can watch that diamond gradient tutorial. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on F64 Academy, where we learned to master Photoshop to make better photos. The F64 Academy is Photoshop for photographers.